So welcome to my Meet My Friend Plato assignment. Today I will be discussing the Scottish philosopher David Hume. What I will be discussing will, first of all, will be a short biography of the philosopher. Second of all, I'm going to move on to a selection of some of his philosophical theories. And then finally, I'm going to be making some connections to what we've learned in class. To start off with his uh, biography, let's talk about his early life. So David Hume was born David Hume. His last name was spelled H-O-M-E, however. Uh, and he was born to Joseph Home, who was a lawyer, and Catherine Falconer in Edinburgh on the 26th of April, 1711. He later changed his name to the spelling of H-U-M-E because H-O-M-E was pronounced Hume in Scotland, but people in England didn't know that. Uh, for his education, he attended the University of Edinburgh at the early age of 12, though he never ended up graduating. When his father died, Hume returned home, and there he devoured books and read all that he could on the subject of philosophy. He did feel guilty for spending all of this time reading, as he was making little to no money and lived with a widowed mother and two siblings. He eventually suffered what we would now call as a nervous breakdown, before ultimately regaining his health and then pursuing his studies at home. Hume published A Treatise of Human Nature, his first book, in 1739 at age 26. He was disappointed by its initial release, going as far as to say that it felt dead-born from the press. He anticipated that his work would catapult him into immediate superstardom in the world of philosophy, but this took a while longer than he'd originally anticipated. His modern-day biographer, a man named Roderick Graham, says that his writing style is very conversational and easy to read. After his book's publication, Hume took up a job as librarian to the Faculty of Advocates at the University of Edinburgh after failing to land a job as a professor there. When he ordered three French books from the, for the library, the administrators did not approve, and Hume gave his position to a blind, penniless poet. In 1748, he published An Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding. This was a follow-up to his first book, and essentially a reworking of his original work. It was a companion. It tried to explain what he'd previously talked about a little bit more clearly. Following this second book, he pursued a career as a historian, believing that he'd said all that he could on the subject of philosophy. Hume died in 1776 in Edinburgh of, we can assume, liver cancer and a ruptured upper intestinal tract. Hume said, I am dying as swiftly as my enemies would pray for and as comfortably as my friends would expect. This most likely meant that he was intoxicated. Hume made no allusions to the afterlife or to the fact that he would either be going to heaven or to hell. So now we're going to move on to his philosophical views. I've selected three of his main uh, theories that he discussed through his life and through his written works. So those would be empiricism and skepticism, the bundle theory, and the problem of induction. So starting with empiricism and skepticism, Hume was such an extreme empiricist because he based some of his philosoph philosophical reasonings on the English philosopher John Locke. He believed in skepticism, which was the theory that true knowledge was completely unattainable, and that the real world, if it truly exists, is unknowable. He was also a strong atheist, um, though he never officially came out and said that, because atheism at the time was punishable by death. He didn't believe in God because you could not prove God's existence through the senses. So moving on to the bundle theory, Hume believed that there were no actual physical objects, merely features. Using the example of a Macintosh apple, we know that it is round, that it's red, that it's shiny, and that it's sour. These are all properties of the apple. Hume claimed that there were no actual apples by challenging people to come up with any sort of object that had no properties. In his opinion, if you were to strip away all properties or features of an apple or any other object, there would be simply nothing left. He also applied this theory to us. Hume did not believe in the existence of self, claiming that we are merely sensory organs that connect with the brain to erroneously formulate our own existences. He did not believe that we existed as physical, tangible objects. Moving on to the problem of induction. Hume was an enormous fan of the scientific method, which placed a high value on concrete facts. But uh, regardless of that, he did have a problem with science. He believed, he believed that all science was based upon lies, called the induction fallacy. The fallacy states that just because something happened in the past, it is not guaranteed to happen again. This challenge, challenges science, because science is based on the idea that if something happens under exactly the same conditions as it happened once before, the results will be exactly the same. Following Hume's logic, it would be as if someone only ever received red apples and made the statement that all apples are red. If he were to be presented with a green apple, then he would be proved wrong. 
So now we're going to move on to connecting some of Hume's ideas to class. Now we've only just begun to explore some of the um, theories that Hume presented. So one of those would be tabula rasa, which is Latin for blank slate. And that's the opinion that we are born as a blank sl slate, so we don't have any preconceived knowledge. And then all of our experiences and the influence of what we uh, can interpret through our senses, that that contributes to all of our knowledge. So we're not born with any knowledge at all. So we discussed the question in class, is knowledge completely derived from our experiences? And we had individual group discussions about that. And at least in our group, we decided that we needed a more concrete definition of knowledge because we did agree that you could have inherently instincts. So as Sabrina brought up in class, you would be able to uh, recognize that you need love, that you need to breathe, that your heart is beating. These are all things that happen inherently, and some of them are instincts, such as uh, feeling hunger or thirst, or again, the need for love. But we would challenge that saying that there is no preconceived idea of knowledge when you are born. And I think that this image really properly illustrates the concept of tabula rasa and also this idea of empiricism. Because we can see um, a woman breastfeeding her child, and the woman on her flesh has very small tattoos that are barely noticeable, but the child is completely covered in tattoos. And this kind of shows how when he was born, he was a clean slate, but then as he breastfeeds and gets his experiences from the mother, he becomes full of all of these uh, ideas and this knowledge. So I thought that that was a very interesting graphic. And that concludes my project on the philosopher David Hume. I hope you enjoyed and found it informative. Thanks for watching.